auto shrimps. Got a bio question. And uh, the fact lady, as we are referring to her in the <laughs> chat, is Megan Putz. She is a marine biologist, correct? I am. Good job. So she knows all of these facts. And Coralie is a geologist who sometimes tells us stuff. <laughs> so uh, can you explain crinoid? <laughs> Explain crinoid. Um, so crinoids are econoderms. So they are in the phylum econodermata, Zoom in on the star, which please. is related to um, brittle stars like what we're seeing right now, sea cucumbers, sea urchins. They have that uh, pentaradial symmetry or radial symmetry that you see in a lot of econoderms. And uh, they are one of the more ancient um, econoderms, and they're often found in the fossil record. So there are a lot of different fossils along the fossil record of crinoids. So there are a lot more known species of crinoid, but most of them are fossils. And we've actually been finding more and more living species of crinoids in the deep sea than what we'd expected. So there are crinoids in shallower waters, but a lot of the species that we know are known from the deep ocean. I've got a question about the sandy patches. Uh, we did discover what the sandy patches are. They are caused by what, Megan? They are caused by spoon worms or echiurins. These animals burrow in the sediment, creating a U-shaped burrow, and they send out their pro proboscis or spoon uh, for feeding. And when we first came on shift, we saw these sort of weird like vacuum cleaner tracks, very regular. Um, and we were trying pondering what might cause that. And it was really odd. And then we saw this proboscis and uh, going into a burrow. And it was like, oh, that must be why we see those little swipey swipies on the rock. It's due to the spoon worms feeding. We could do a thing where if it comes out and sees its shadow, we have six more days of diving. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's totally true. Nope, I will swim back to shore. <laughs> it's a long swim. It's a long swim. Coralie was going to do it, so we can just, like, team up, tag team. I, I was going to do it if I needed to. <laughs> Not just for fun. Not just for fun. Too bad. But but if something were to happen, put on the little orange suit. Uh, I don't think you can swim in that. You can actually. Can you swim in that? Yeah, I mean you can you can move places. I don't know if you'd call it true swimming, <laughs> but you can. Probably be more of a planktonic swimming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you can go a ways in them. Um, Sounds exhausting. <laughs> right. Well, you float pretty well in them, so it's just kind of moving your arms to get you moving. I think that would work for like the first 10 minutes when I still had some adrenaline left, and then I would just crash. Yeah, yeah but we have a relay yeah. race contest with them. Relay. Really? Oh, that sounds fun. Did you win? Uh, No. <laughs> we got beat by the Coast Guard. Oh, well, yeah. Which is probably a good thing. Absolutely. <laughs> Still, it would have been cool if you beat the Coast Guard. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I... I don't know. I don't nope. think I would have felt good about that. <laughs> like, yeah, I won, but do I feel safe? Can we zoom in on this little guy? Yep. All right. We are zooming on a Brasingid sea star. Ooh. So this sea star actually uh, is a filter feeder. You can see these little sticky balls at the ends of the spines along the arms. It uses that to capture prey. So things will stick to the sticky sticky pads and they'll bring it to their mouth, which is actually on the underside of their body. This commenter said, I feel, uh, they always pictured the ocean just teeming with fish. They feel silly when they watch these dives and realize that's not like that at all. The ocean is teeming with fish. Um, also, we don't know what's avoiding the ROV either. Also, don't feel silly about not knowing something about our planet. It's Absolutely. a lot to learn and 
good on you for learning okay. it. This is why we are actually exploring right now, because no one has ever seen this before. So we don't know anything about this place. Hard on the brakes. This is going to raise some sediment. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, I was trying to tap the screen, but I was using the wrong side of the Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay, let's it. raise the sediment here. Go ahead for a zoom. Oh, oh look at that. I think we collected one of these before. This is a post-elasterity type of sea star. It, this one looks really weird. Look how inflated the uh, the body, like the main yeah. disc is of the sea star. Wow, that's really cool. Uh, the only same. a couple centimeters across. It's really tiny. Do we want to suck this up? Yep. Yeah, we're going to suck it up. Okay. It's like Ready? the same uh, pearlescentness of those uh, little shiny bits Come we saw wide, earlier. Please. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty gorgeous. I know that this this animal was on our wish list. Yeah, I don't think it'll fit in the slurp. We could grab you it by a leg and put it in a box, though. Yeah, both boxes are open. It might be easy to Fridge slurp and, and and suck and sort of blow it into the box. We can try if you'd like. Yeah, because it's gonna breath, be but... it's gonna be really soft, so it might be hard to pick up. I'm not sure. It's up to you, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Let's try to slurp it, and if it doesn't go up, then we'll put it in the box. Um, how can we tell the size of these animals? Those two little lasers um, are 10 centimeters apart, so we can take an estimate based on that. What jar are you doing? Are you doing two? Correct, two. Do you want to zoom? You got to follow through with the sample. We'll deal with the knife later. Do you want to zoom in? No? Okay, suction coming on. Suction's on. You're pushing the vehicle. Okay, I'm ready for the toolbox. And now you wrist roll. There you go. Exactly. Exactly like that. Nice. Either side. That's good. And I'll stop the suction. Now you got to give it a shake, shake. Right, good. Now pull it out. Not up, but out forward. Don't know. Yeah, did I? You're all bound up. Bring the arm away from the to the like to the right. Yeah, there you go. Okay, well, maybe past the slurp thing. So I'm gonna try slurping. You just hold it there a sec. I'll watch, see if it comes into the into the jar. If it makes it past the nozzle, it'll make it all the way. Maybe, sometimes, likely. In the meantime, let's look in this box. And also, let's move. I thought I saw it fall into the box. Can you put bubble on the inside of the box? See if you can see a sea star in there. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah, it's Neato. In there. Yeah. Cool. I, was, I thought I saw it. Yeah, I thought I saw it. Back to, it's like the same color as the box. Yeah, it's hard to see. Good job. Okay, so can you guys see in the back row uh, the slurp jar cam? Yeah. 
So you see how there's some stuff in there? Yeah. Um, do you want that to be noted or? Um, anyway, just, just so you know that that's in Slurp Jar 2. It's okay. not perfectly sterile, clean, whatever you guys uh, do. Okay, yeah, I'll keep that um, in mind. I, I don't think that that would harm any other samples that we'd want to take. It's just a little bit of this uh, mud that's here. So anything we slurp, Can probably we'll that, get um, mud in it. Okay, that thing. was sample 079. 079. You got, a, you got a shoulder up and wrist away from you, big time. Yep. <laughs> Bridge nav five zero meters one zero zero. There you go. Yeah. That's right. Shoulder all the way up. Fish, fish. Yep. Otherwise, you don't have room for the wrist. Up. Yeah, then wrist up. I think that was another yep. Typhlonus nasus, that blind Cuskeel, possibly passing us by. But we are in the midst of stowing our arm. There you go. Nice. With more shoulder up, you'll clear the porch. Yeah, and keep doing that. Same uh, same thing. Cool. Keep doing more of it. And I'll straighten that wrist out, and then you'll be should be good to go. So your wrist is all the way right right now. So once you move the shoulder right, you can wrist left. Yeah, exactly. Just like that. And do another one of those. Okay, so before you let go, I'm going to get down to the bottom here. Yeah, stand by. Okay, you should be good there. Bridge nav, hold position.
Great. Antonella, are you okay with me moving the vehicle while you're while you're doing this, or you want me to stay still? Uh, I'll get you a bubble view. There it is. Nice. Um, maybe in the front box. Um, let me ask science real quick. Hey, science. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Earth, two, let's see. Oh, I can't hear you. Okay. Uh, so we've got this knife that we just need to stash in one of the boxes, uh, perhaps the front box. Is there, uh, is there a preference that you have here? Okay, Roger that. Okay. Yeah. Bio box forward bio box A. It's probably. Uh yep. Leftmost one. Let me make sure I'm all racked back. Yep. You okay with this uh small opening there? Or do you want it all the way out? Okay. Awesome. Nice job. That's good. Beautiful. Easy peasy. We might need a little stuffy action on that. Let's see. Yeah. Want to stuff that little ball down in there. Nope. Okay. You're great. Just get out of there. Just make a note. You can. Nice. Beauty. Uh, you want to stick the uh, magnet, stick the uh, scoop to the magnet? I'm going to give you a little bubble view. Um, it's... Um, she's been busy. Um, so let me see if I can get you a little view there. It's going to be drunk and bubble, but you can handle it. <laughs> You're doing great. Hey, what's up? Yeah, sounds good. You're doing great. So yeah, just take a second. Um, why don't you close your jaws? Just take a second. Um, I've got to scoot the uh, vehicle up ahead, so why don't you just wait for a second, okay? Oh, beauty. Lock the jaws closed, hold still for a second, and I'm gonna move the vehicle. There you go. Okay. Um, okay. Can you give me a 090 view with Argus? Thank you. That way I can get out in front of the swing here a little bit.
Okay, maybe not in this area of mucho silt. They'll be setting down in a second. When we do start moving, it'll be one zero zero. Okay, sounds good. I'll get over to starboard a little bit. So silty here. Okay, hold on one second. Um, just for the sake of holding on. You're in a really good spot. You see sort of how your arm is arranged, like what all your joints are doing. Sometimes you can like lose track of what your joints do. Um, so it's like, looks like it's in like a really neutral position. Uh, basically just azimuthed in. Nice. Beautiful job holding those jaws. And if you don't want to do it, it's totally fine. I. I absolutely think you can do it, but you may need to like, I, I get tired using the arm a lot. So it may be, it may be more that issue than that you can't do it. So it's going to be wrist pitch to get yourself out of there. Do you want me to reset the arm around to the side? Try your wrist pitch up, and that'll get you out, because you're sort of in a little trough there between the... Well, hold on one second, I can show you which one it is if you want to separate them out again. Or you can do elbow up. Yeah, nice, beautiful. There you go. Good one. Okay. I don't think that's true, but a certain, like, at first there's a certain amount of, like, brain fatigue that comes from, like, a lot of arm usage, I think. That's my feeling anyways. Okay. 
Do you want to give it one more try? OK. It's weighted wrong. Yeah, go for it. If you're happy with the position of Argus. Oh, the scoop fun. <laughs> What's that? Oh, the scoop fun. There's, I know, the scoop fun the is Argus good. View. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, nice. It kind of just went up a little bit. Love the scoop. There was an octopus. Oh, cool. I missed it. I was distracted by the ROV. I love how the uh, sediment is mimicking the shape of Hercules in the Argus shot. I could swear it's on the magnet. Good afternoon. There we go. How are you this fine afternoon? What's that? Sorry, did you say something? Okay. Oh no, that was a, a, a line switch, line think, cross. Yeah, that's on the magnet. Okay. <sighs> that's Trevor behind you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So it's meal time um, where we're doing some switch outs and and maintenance. So just bear with us while we take care of these things. Didn't want to distract from the very important ROV operations. Food is important. Got to keep our brains fresh and focused, supplied. Um, nothing at the moment. You ready for a move? Sure. All right. Bridge nav, five star. zero meters, one zero zero. Um, nothing. We're in the same spot. So. Is that like the one we just collected? I think so. I think it might be similar to the one that we just collected. Yep, there it is. Let's see. 
Yeah, this one's a little bit inflated, but not nearly as crazily inflated as the one that we collected. And then there's a mycid shrimp floating on by. You can see those tube feet on this sea star. That's how they walk around. This, did this little dude have a common name that you know of? Um, not that I know of, but the scientific name is... Let me see. Postselenasterity. So I think that sort of set, like gives you the hint that it's like porcelain. So maybe speaking a little bit to the color, how it looks. I hope that octopus comes back. Yeah. I've been jonesing for an octopus this whole time. I know. I'm. Yeah, there was an octopus in the Argus view. Gosh darn it. It was very brief. I got a couple bounces. There's a tiny fish. Fish where? Right here. Ooh, good eye. We've been seeing okay, quite a few fish. fish. Oh, look at that face. It's pretty cute. It's got a really stubbed nose. Very stoic movement. Yeah. Very proud um, well, fish. it's a cuskey, oh. It could be a porogatus, possibly. So uh, Ken Sulak wrote in chat to us, uh, one of the characters to look for when identifying porogatus is a double lateral line. So uh, maybe when we review the imagery later, we'll be able to do a freeze frame and uh, see if there was a double lateral line uh, in that zoom. Question in the chat, do you have to go through a six-week course to learn to say all these scientific names? It's longer than six weeks. And imagine you just kind of pick them up as you go along. That's pretty much it. I've been working on it since 2013 or so. Is 2013's when 
2013 is when I started becoming like a scientist ashore, and I started to participate in the chat, start to pick up scientific names of things. It's not something you learn in standard invertebrate zoology. Yeah, I was gonna say. And look at you now, Steve. Yeah. Science manager. <laughs> science manager. How does one manage the science? Um. He's crazy. Make sure nothing. He does no all one gets stuff. hurt. Yeah, make sure all the data gets checked. Make sure all the samples are there. Yep. Teaches us what to do. The SOPs. We love our SOPs. So, you're like Coralie's boss, essentially, on this cruise. Mm, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm I don't on know. What's your What's your official role? I, <laughs> I, I have what are you doing, doing here? here? <laughs> <laughs> are data you? data logger, yeah. But I, just because you're a logger doesn't mean. Zoom in on this white thing, please. You're. Yeah. I I would classify you as guest scientist, but yeah. you are in the data logger seat. Oh yeah, it looks like a maybe a scaphopod or some sort of polychaete. Scaphopods have that tusk shape. Um, shell thing. Doesn't look very fresh, though. What would fresh look like? Uh, that one was covered with a lot of, like, hydroids and things. You know, deep, sh deep sea gunk builds up. Coralie, aren't you More studying deep weight. sea gunk? There's a lot of things covered in deep sea gunk. Most things make a living on deep sea gunk. I study ferromanganese crust, thank you very much. So, a variety of deep sea gunk. I would classify them as hydrogenetic rocks. Oh, big <laughs> words you? tonight. What is this? Is this a cuke? Oh, yeah. I think it is a cuke. Let's have a zoom on the furry, fuzzy, dirty cuke, please. <laughs> no. We did sample one of these, uh, or maybe it was, no, maybe it wasn't one of these. It was something similar. Is it alive? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. What? Why is it so yeah. dirty? Um, mm. It's a good question. Sometimes they do that. Yeah, there's there's whole groups of um, holothurians that um, will use their tube feet. So these belong to the echinoderms which usually all have some sort of tube foot uh, to hide themselves with shells and things. So this one just prefers to use sediment, blend in. It's smart. Don't know, don't know why, yeah. But some of them, yeah, look like, a, <laughs> you know, I imagine like at a, at a baseball game, right? Hot dog falls on the stands and it rolls in the peanuts and stuff and it gets <laughs> oh, you no. know, on the floor. And then it kind of looks like that. Um, <laughs> that's their camouflage. Their shallower distributed species called Mesothuria. Hot dog camouflage. Yeah. Definitely nobody's going to eat that, or at least no human. I'm sure the birds would love it. Yeah. Hot dog camouflage? Yeah, so some sea cucumbers were saying uh, kind of look like they stick all sorts of stuff to their bodies uh, as potentially some sort of either mechanical camouflage or you know, some sort of sensory camouflage. And uh, shells of all different sizes, and it kind of looks like if you were at a baseball game, and you dropped a hot dog on the stands, you know, and it rolled down a few rows, picking up all the peanut oh, shells and stuff that people, yes. you know, yeah. <laughs> Very elaborate metaphors tonight. I don't know if that's really elaborate for uh, Team Blue Water. <laughs> I think we need, <laughs> need to get a couple more steps beyond that to be elaborate. All right, I'm the guest. You're the guest. You, you are the guest. You want another elaborate hot dog metaphor? Uh, <laughs> could be how I was, how we've been sleeping during the rolling seas. It's uh. feeling like a gas station hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a hot dog musubi at the 7 Eleven uh, in Honolulu. That was fascinating. A hot dog, what? No, no, it wasn't musubi. It was a bun. So, like a steamed bun, except it was a hot dog. What? Oh, I bet yeah. that. Yeah. It probably tastes good. It was, well, you'd think so, but it was like still sticking out of like, it's like they took a steamed bun or like the dough and just like 
put a hot dog through yeah. it so it's still sticking out on either side. But how would you know what's inside of it? It so wasn't It's like a pig out. in a blanket type yeah. of deal, yeah. but with a steam bun. Right, and it's like it was like baked instead of steamed. I'm, I'm okay. I didn't need to try it. <laughs> it could be delicious, though. Like, in theory, that would be delicious. Try everything once. Yeah. yeah. Still breaks. Cool. Mm, whoops. Very crusty crust. I think in general, gas station sushi is something you should stay away from. Actually, no. Not in Honolulu, apparently. The seven, well, uh, I guess 7 Eleven's not a gas station. But um, someone that. Oh, you live there, don't you, Sue? It's 7 Eleven? Yeah, the 7 Eleven sushi. Megan said it was awesome. I, I didn't go there. Um, I don't. I don't know if I'm brave enough to try that. <laughs> she said it was like legitimate. Like it's okay. I'm. I'm sure it is. It's probably got spam. Yeah, I'm not. There a is spam. I saw some spam musubi. Absolutely. Not but they really. had like salmon onigiri. Hmm. Not much of a spam fan. Spam fan. Yeah. <laughs> My brother says that eating, well, he likes it, but he also says that when he eats it, it feels like he's having a heart attack, like actively. Yeah. Put that down. <laughs> Hot dogs and McDonald's replicate. chicken nuggets are the only weird meats that I am okay with consuming. <laughs> I think they meats say that on the spam marks. can, it's like that it will cause heart attack like sensations. <laughs> 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 you can ignore them. It's probably being the level honest. of salt. <laughs> Um, question in the chat, are a lot of us working on research projects? The scientists are. What are you working on, Coralie? I am working on a project about science. Yep. Thanks. That's the summary. Thank you. Uh, I'm working with ferromanganese crusts, and for this particular uh, expedition, I am looking to collect water and rock pairs to see if there's a relationship between the composition of the water and the composition of the rocks. Because, uh, as I said before, uh, ferromanganese crusts Fish by are Alistair. hydrogenetic rocks, which means they precipitate out of the water and onto hard substrates like the seamounts that we're seeing right now. And so since they are made out of the water, we feel like there has to be some sort of relationship between the water and the rocks. But uh, I'm not sure anyone has done any broad studies on that. So that's what I'm aiming to do. You'll be the first. Steve, you got anything you're working on? Yeah, when I'm not science managing, I, uh, I have an active research program right now. Um, a lot of what I do is writing grant proposals to get funding, but uh, I have an ongoing project from an expedition that I went on with my lab group um, at Boston University to the Phoenix Islands this summer. Um, we were primarily in the region of Howland and Baker Island, um, Pacific Mode Islands please. Marine National Monument, uh, where we were looking at patterns of uh, biodiversity on seamounts, very similar to this. What's that? Jelly? Okay, bye. Siphonophore, maybe. Megan was saying that something that looks similar to that earlier was a siphonophore. So I, I'm using a lot of different tools, um, both kind of analyzing video transects like this to try and understand what are the spatial distribution patterns of uh, some of the corals we see in these types of environments. I'm looking at um, some of the uh, evolutionary um, uh, patterns we see in the seamount landscape. So, um, you know, what fish. does coral community structure look like at oh. certain depths? I was going to look at the coral, but let's look at the fish. Oh, there's a fish, yeah. This is a very fishy dive. Fish, please. Very. I mean, zoom, please. Another blind boy, or does that one... Oh, no. I see an eyeball. Yeah. Oh, this will look. This looks like... Um, to look up the name. I've seen this before, though. Look at the size of the head. We saw one of these on the last cruise, didn't we? Yeah, I think this is... Yes or, yes or now? Acanthonus. <laughs> it's a very colorful common name. Is this the, the bony eared ass fish? It's a what? Yes. yes. There you we go. Can't, we can't say that, though. A what <laughs> fish? You can look it up. Can you give me a name it's so a I can... It's a type of cuscule. Okay. I'll, I'll post the link in the chat. At the science oh. chat. 
Maybe I have chat here. Maybe I don't. I think I logged out of chat here. I'll I'll put it in. <laughs> uh, it's a type of cuskiel. Cannot type today. My goodness. Okay. Uh. So yeah, I am also wondering that as well. What? Because there is another name that we weren't allowed to say also <laughs> earlier. Uh, I threw it in the science chat for you. Corley. I threw it oh, in the science chat for you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. It's turned on. I thought I only had SPL turned on. Sorry to everyone who's <laughs> thinking I'm only having a conversation with myself. I'm. I'm spying on someone. You're not spying. You're allowed to listen. Gracious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for Coralie, how much of an impact does deep sea pressure have on geologic formations beyond the crusting? Uh, I I don't know if it has that much of an impact. Um, you know. I think the crusts are something that we see only in the water because they're hydrogenetic, but you know, we see basalt on land and we see sediment on land and they're deposited in similar ways. Um, the water though can make different uh, like markings in the sediment than like a wind, than wind would. So I don't think pressure has so much to do with the differences in the depth like the the geologic features that we see it would probably be more about the depositional environment. Nice. And this is a question, I guess, for Steve. Are the areas that we explore in pre-approved? Are there any places that are restricted from being recorded or researched? Uh, let's see. Um, right here, I don't think uh, we're operating under any particular permits because we're not in a protected uh, area. Um, however, there are some restrictions in the vicinity, like in the last cruise we were in the uh, Marine National Monument, Papaano Mokuakea, uh, in, for most of the dives. Uh, a couple of exceptions, we were out in the high seas um, waters. But um, yeah, in those types of areas where you have protected waters, you definitely have to apply for permits um, if you're planning on doing any sampling uh, or any surveying. Um, they're they're fairly tight uh, with the restrictions about how many things we can take, like how many rocks, how many uh, coral samples, uh, trying to minimize the disturbance to the environment. Um, but you know, th these are in U.S. waters, of course. But if we moved outside uh, to another country's jurisdiction, we would definitely have to abide by the permits that were granted for sampling outside um, of in, inside of their waters. Um, but there's also the third state, which is the high seas, which is, um, for the most part, unrestricted about what you can take from a scientific perspective. What you can take? What you can take, like biological collections, since it's not... Really? Yeah. It's not really well... Uh, it, but the but unclosed, like, regulates a lot of that. Uh, I don't, like... It, it, it does, but um, I think it... I have to go back to the text and look, but I don't think for research purposes, uh, there's no agency you petition on the high seas to do sampling um, of, say, corals and sponges. What makes a sea high? <laughs> I, 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 I don't really mean that joke. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a colloquialism. Do you mean like international waters or what is it? What is uh, yeah, international so waters. Okay. I thought international waters are like water. So, okay, there's like every coastal state has a territorial sea, and that's 12 nautical miles from your coastline. Um, and then past that is the EEZ, which is 200 nautical miles from your territorial sea. And then outside of that, that is the high seas. Mm. And that's something the EEZ and the territorial sea, the coastal state has jurisdiction over. So like we couldn't go to like Mexico or Canada or Japan's EEZ and do science and collect stuff there. 
but in the territorial or in the high seas, it's the it's like freedom of the high seas. So <laughs> technically, we're allowed to do stuff, but there are some restrictions. Like uh, there's the ISA, the International Seabed Authority, who's in charge of all of all of the seabed. Um, there are some restrictions, I think, on like the benthic creatures, but there's actually uh, there's this new agreement, implementing agreement that they're actually trying to make right now. It's called the BB and J Biodiversity Beyond National Jurisdiction um, that would probably uh, have some authority over taking marine yep. sample like live kind of biology samples from the seafloor would this affect your your research as well does it affect rock samples or is it all biological samples the bb and j yeah uh i don't think so the only reason i know this is because i've been studying for this final yeah i was just thinking like you were like rattling it off like you'd read a flash card <laughs> um uh so they there's this uh there's this like thing that uh, with the BB and J that it's not supposed to like quote unquote step on other others' toes. So like they can't make new agreements for things that already have a governance regime around. So like they can't make new agreements around anything to do with seabed mining because there's already a governance regime for that, which is the ISA. So it's like there it's more about like marine genetic resources i think that they're worried about um geo uh geoengineering stuff like that has anyone told them that that sounds yeah. too much like pb and j <laughs> bb and j yeah <laughs> i feel like scientists or like government um entities don't talk to anyone else before they name things like anyone <laughs> in like the like average joe community well that's just uh that's just in english remember like oh, this yeah. is you know these things this is like a, a world governance so it's going to be know. different in <laughs> different but, like, languages yeah so like utc is not like the english um acronym like well, how am I, the words for the acronym for utc in english are not utc because yeah. it is in another language mm -hmm. Yeah, regardless of, uh, you know, what whatever type of jurisdiction rules you're following, um, there are specific uh, conventions in place if you try to land specimens that might be uh, restricted. For example, if you're carrying um, species that are protected under the CITES convention, um, if you are planning on landing those in a, a nation that is a signatory of that treaty, you have to go through some paperwork uh, in order to go about transporting those and making sure you have export and import licenses uh, yeah. for those particular specimens. But th those are the only restrictions that I know of right now that really govern um, non-commercial uses uh, and of you know, high seas, you know, biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction um, currently. But we'll see how that shakes out. Yeah. It's really it's really difficult because a lot of these rules are kind of unenforceable. Um, you know, the United Nations and its entities don't really have an enforcement mechanism beyond yeah. the state partners or a state uh, uh, yeah. signatories. Yeah. Yeah. Most international law is soft law, meaning that there's hard law, which is binding agreements like treaties and stuff, and then soft law is kind of vague terms which is what a lot of it is having said that the united states is not a part of unclose um so technically we don't have to follow the rules of it however the united states does follow the rules of unclose what is having that said that thing? none of it applies <laughs> Go ahead, we're, in, please. we're also on a foreign flagship so that's uh, oh, a yeah. it, it gets a bit murkier swimmer sure is it's yes. swimming it was a little yellow hat. Yeah. <laughs> like a little crown. Uh, they sometimes Everybody. call them the, the green bomber. They can drop those and as a distraction. Fish. And this is a Chana Cups. Chana Cups. Chana Cups are favorite. It is a little deep for Chana Cups. Zoom in, please. 
Yeah, so many fish. I love all the fish. This one's got face tattoos. Aww. You can see uh, its gill openings, which are right on each side of the pectoral fins. And the interesting about this fish is uh, those gill openings are behind the pectoral fins. Usually they're located in front and uh, they can actually actively open and close right, thanks. to breathe and they can use um, their gills as siphons to sort of propel them through the water. They're not the greatest swimmers. Um, it's really cute to watch them swim though. Their heads are just so big. So, um, had a question. Um, are there any upcoming expeditions to deep sea canyons? Do we know about our upcoming expeditions? Um, we do know what our expeditions are going to be. Are we allowed to next say? year? I'm not sure <laughs> if it's posted yet. Um, it's not on the website. Yeah, it's not currently on the website, but it will be soon. Uh, in terms of canyons, uh, we're not as staying in the Pacific next year, so coral, we will please? not be exploring any canyons uh, because we will be As exploring seamounts and island flanks. So no canyons for the next few years, but if you are really interested in canyons, I believe the Okino Okeanos Explorer is on the Atlantic coast and exploring canyons over there. They might have some dives in canyons, but that will not be what our um, operations are gonna be for the next year. We are currently looking at a chrysogorgid coral. This is Rumilogorgia militaris. Is this our first coral? For no, the we've dive? seen corals we've already. Corals? Okay. The first coral I, I've noticed. We had that one rock uh, like right at the start there. Oh, okay. With all the little wee corals on it, remember oh, that? Oh, the wee corals, yeah, yeah. That was. This is the first big coral. How's that? I think so, yeah. We've seen a couple maybe from far away, but never did verify. All right, Coralie, question. What is the origin of all of the sediment? And we are seeing a lot of it. Yeah, so there's a couple different things it can be from. So some of the sediment is marine snow, but a lot of sediment that comes into the ocean is uh, from land. So you can either be in from wind transport or water transport, rivers, stuff like that. Rain can wash it away. Are there any biologic sediments? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> what, does that mean? Yes. what does that mean? <laughs> like, yes, 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 but also, what does that mean? <laughs> I, I, just saw, I just wanted you to say the word ooze. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say that, but then I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah, you can have some salacious oozes. Yuck. That's it. That's all I have. You ended that in the ellipses. Yeah. Calcareous <laughs> oozes. Yeah. What are oozes? H how do you make an ooze? They're oozy. Like it's like goo. It's like sediment goo with these animals so, in them. Yeah. So silicious ooze is made mostly from uh, diatom tests. Yes. And calcareous oozes are radiolarians mostly. And those Here's are planktonic organisms that live in the surface ocean. Here's a canyon. Mini canyon. Mini canyon. We're getting all the baby stuff on this one. Same out. Baby canyons. You really cannot tell that that's a little micro canyon from Herc at all. You can only see it from Argus. What a letdown. Navigator Aaron, do you have time for a mapping question? Sure, go ahead. So when mapping the deep sea, are there any discovered features that draw particular interest? Specifically ones that were not seen with previous low resolution mapping. Um, I mean, like, yeah, well, all features, they're all interesting.